This video from Learn Electrics will help you to calculate a realistic maximum demand for your installation certificates. Many electricians will turn to Appendix A of the on-site guide, which will often return greater than expected figures. Many do not realise that under certain circumstances, especially domestic, Appendix H might give more realistic results. The video is based around information supplied in the Brown Amendment 2 on-site guide. Where table numbers are quoted, we've also included the page number to help you to find the page more easily. BS 7671 18th edition Amendment 3 has been released and is now live. Amendment 3 is a 10-page add-on pack that goes with the current Amendment 2 Brown book. If you have the Brown Wiring Regulations book and you print the 10-page add-on pack, this will effectively convert your book into Amendment 3 and there will be no need to buy new books. Nothing in the Amendment 3 pack will affect the subject of this video, which is maximum demand and diversity. For a complete update on Amendment 3, and how to download your own free copy, see our video on Amendment 3 and we will leave details in the description to this video. Before we go into the video, a note on the subject of diversity. The OSG or on-site guide is just that, a guide to help you. The OSG makes several statements relating to diversity and tells us that there cannot be a diversity formula that fits every circumstance and every installation all of the time. It is therefore the responsibility of the designer of that particular installation to determine the loading of the circuits, the daily variations in demand, and for the designer to use an appropriate method of calculation. This video will show you some methods that you may wish to consider. Before we look at Appendix H, let's start with Appendix A and see where this takes us. Turn to page 137 of the on-site guide, where you will find Table A2. This page shows the different types of circuits and usages and suggests how to calculate diversity for each individual circuit of the installation. Even after diversity, this often has a tendency to still return a high maximum demand figure. Let's look. The example here has been taken from a typical local dwelling, a household, and will be used throughout the video. We've made a list in the leftmost column of the type of circuit, then the circuit breaker rating, and finally the design current for each particular circuit. We've made it look neat here, but it could just as easily be hand-drawn on an A4 pad while on site. And do keep any calculations that you make to go with your own copies of the test certificates, etc. Adding up all the design currents, not the breaker ratings, we have, before diversity, 170.5 amps as a maximum demand. When we complete an EIC, or Electrical Installation Certificate, we will be asked to enter details of the supply protective device, the cutout fuse. Our example house has a 100 amp BS1361 fuse, but the maximum demand before diversity is just over 170 amps. Clearly, this can never be right. The maximum demand should be less than the fuse rating. Remember IB, IN, IZ? And we will leave a link to a video on this in the description to this video. If we apply diversity by using Appendix A, what new figure do we get? Using Table A2 on page 137, we see that each circuit type has a recommended diversity calculation. We apply these in turn, and for some circuits there is no diversity permitted. We use the full design current. For the socket circuits, in theory, it's possible to load the circuit 
to the full 32 amps. Just keep plugging appliances into it. So we use 32 amps as the design current for the socket circuits. I always assume that the kitchen sockets will be the most heavily loaded. There is always something going on in my kitchen and at meal times we start to run out of sockets. So 32 amps, 100% for the kitchen and 40% for each of the other socket circuits. Lighting has a 66% diversity factor applied and people usually turn off unused lights as they leave the rooms empty behind them. The cooker has a split diversity, 10 amps plus 30% of the remainder. If the cooker control panel has a 13 amp socket built in, then we would also add on another 5 amps. But this house didn't have one. The rightmost column shows the loading for each circuit after diversity. We can add all the new figures together and logically we would expect a reduction in the load. Diversity is telling us that not everything will be on at the same time and not every circuit will use its full load all of the time. The new figure is a little over 117 amps. Let's put that onto our electrical installation certificate. With 117.4 amps as our maximum demand after diversity, we can clearly see that this still exceeds the rating of the cutout fuse by nearly 20%. Not by as much as before, but still enough to just not look right. We all know that a 100 amp cutout fuse is the standard size as installed by all network operators. We also know that the circuit breakers and circuits in this house are very typical of hundreds of thousands of other houses up and down the nation. So, what's going on? How do we arrive at a figure that looks like it makes sense? Let's start again, and this time use Appendix H, an often overlooked appendix. Look at row 9 of table A2 on page 138 of the on-site guide. It tells us that under certain conditions, if the circuits comply with Appendix H, and if the installation is an individual household, a single dwelling, and if the socket circuits meet the requirements of table H2.1 of appendix H on page 210, then we can use a different diversity calculation. This new calculation is 100% of the largest circuit plus 40% of everything else, but only if appendix H applies, which it does with our example installation and very probably will for many houses. Looking at table H2.1 on page 210, we see an explanation of A1, A2 and A3 circuits for the sockets. Nothing complicated, and subsequent pages discuss the rest of the installation. Will this make a difference? Applying diversity to the same installation, I've chosen the kitchen sockets as the 100% circuit, 32 amps. So, 170.5 amps minus 32 amps is 138.5 amps. We now find 40% of this remainder, which is 55.4 amps. Add back in the 32 amps for the kitchen, and we have a new diversity of 87.4 amps. Let's put this onto the installation certificate. The same cutout rating of 100 amps and now the maximum load after diversity is 87.4 amps. For this installation, common to thousands of homes, the figures now look right. And that is the maximum demand at peak usage. There will be many hours of each day and night when the electrical demand is much, much lower. Another question that is often asked, how many sockets should I install in each room? And fortunately for us, there's a table for this in the on-site guide. Table H7 on page 214 is where we should be looking. 
What is the room used for? How big is the room? Etc. Of course, this is a suggested minimum number of sockets. The customer and the designer may wish to modify these numbers. For example, some customers will have quite sophisticated home entertainment setups and may need additional sockets close to their equipment. Twin sockets are listed here, but there may be occasions when single sockets are more appropriate. For example, in kitchen cupboards for washing machines, fridges, freezers and so on. And that raises another question. We see this symbol throughout the electrical books, an M and a 2. Do we call it square metres or metres squared? And in fact, is there a difference? Does it matter? Well, yes it does. Let's ask the question. What is the difference between 12 square metres and 12 metres squared? At number 1, imagine the red square as being 1 metre on each side. This is 1 square metre. It's a square and it measures 1 metre. 1 square metre. Now for number 2. Imagine a shape that is 3 metres along one edge and 4 metres along the other. 3 metres by 4 metres is 12 square metres and we can fit 12 of those little red squares into the shape. It is pronounced 12 square metres and not 12 metres squared. Now for number 3. This shape is 12 metres on each side, 12 by 12 metres. We call this 12 metres squared since we're going to square the 12 metre sides. 12 squared or 12 by 12 is 144. So this shape is 144 square metres. Notice the difference. 144 of the little red blocks. 144 of the square metre blocks. It is so very important that we get these the right way round. 12 metres squared is 144 square metres. So, to answer the original question, in our trade, when talking about room sizes, 12m2 should be pronounced 12 square metres, and I hope that now you understand why. And on the maths side of things, how do we find 40% of a number? 40% is 40 hundredths of a number. 40 divided by 100 is 0 0.4. So if we ask what is 40% of 240, then we can either divide 40 by 100 and multiply the answer by 240 to give us 96, or we can simply multiply 0 0.4 by 240 to get the same 96. And 40% of 60 is 24, whichever method we use. Converting percentages into decimal numbers is very easy. For any percentage of 99% or less, just put a decimal point in front of the percentage. For example, put a decimal point in front of the 30 to get 0.3 or 0 0.3 as we can say. Put a decimal point in front of the 50 to get 0 0.5 and so on. Do this a few times and you will forever remember it. So a quick recap on diversity. What level of diversity to apply is for the designer of the circuit to decide. Only they will know the load requirements and duty cycles of each circuit. The on-site guide or OSG can only suggest possible percentages to use. Is a domestic dwelling really going to consume 80 or 120 amps every hour of every day? Unlikely. More likely to have peaks at breakfast times and in the evening, but even then will every circuit be fully loaded during these periods. Many smart meters will now give the consumer the peak usages and the total daily consumption figures 
and will often store the data for many days. If Appendix H of Table H2.1 applies, then Table A2, Row 9, on page 138 can be used for diversity calculations. In this case, diversity is 100% of the largest circuit, plus 40% of everything else, if Appendix H applies. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and I hope that you found this video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on Notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.